Broadway's my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway, where the measured screaming of the spectaculars echoes into the wilderness of the night, and their cadence is the beat of a metallic and mechanical heart. This is the rhythm of the life you're assigned to on Broadway. There's nothing you can do about it. You challenge it with a whisper or a plea or a cry, and there's no one to hear it, because Broadway's ears are tuned only to the throb of the mechanical heart. It's Broadway, my beat. It came at noon, a transcript of a phone conversation requesting the extraordinary pleasure of my presence at the apartment of one Dion Hartley, but urgently, but immediately. So I put my presence in a squad car, brought it to the apartment of Dion Hartley, and placed it therein. It was an experience. The apartment seemed to contain everything exquisite that had been fashioned or dreamed by men, all in crystal glass cases, all tagged with little golden medallions, and all ruled over by Dion Hartley, but exquisitely. This excruciatingly lovely Grecian statuette, Mr. Clover... You want to know what it cost? No, not particularly. Of course you do. It cost me my most precious emotions, even a few pennies of my soul, if I had one. A devastating price to pay, Mr. Clover, for a lousy statue. If you say so. You're delightful, Mr. Clover. You want to know why I sent for you? Fatally, inevitably, you. Now I'm here, I might as well know. For a very simple reason. I am going to be murdered. Don't look at me that way, Mr. Clover. I'm quite, quite serious. Tell me about it. Look about you, Mr. Clover. My apartment, my possessions. All these reveal a man. Me, Dion Hutley. Satirist for the magazine satire. Revealing, no? Up to a point. Exactly. Only to a point. You would not know, for example, that I am abysmally weary of all this. That all these are only toys. That I have played with them, caressed them, and quite had my fill of them. Up to here. So? So I have gone on to playing with other things. More variable. More thrilling. More impassioned. You're out of my depth, Mr. Hartley. Like what things? Like human emotions, to be exact. An exquisite hobby, Mr. Clover. Humans and their emotions. I get my kicks that way. That's the kind of man Dion Hartley is, huh? That he has become... Mr. Clover, I have tuned a certain group of people up to such an emotional pitch that they have no recourse but to murder me, either individually or collectively. These lucky people, who are they? That's for you to discover, Mr. Clover. Now, wait a minute. You tell me you're going to be murdered. You know the people who might murder you. Still, you won't tell me who they are. I'm suddenly part of the hobby, huh, Mr. Hartley? Exactly. How discerning of you. But you'd better explain it to me anyway. It gives me profound pleasure. This is an exquisite game I have created, Mr. Clover. You are now a part of it. I have made these certain people want desperately to kill me. I shall now make you want to stop them from killing me. And what do you do during all this? Nothing. Precisely nothing. I have set marvelous passions in motion. It's like a play. And I am dying to know what happens at the final curtain. Does it interest you, policeman? No. I shall make it more interesting. A proposal, my policeman. If I am not murdered and lying in the blood of my death at the end of this week, say, I shall pay off with $50,000 to your favorite charity. Will you save my life, Mr. Clover? <laughs> His fingers reached out and lingered on my lapel long enough to capture a piece of lint. Then they fell away. From him it was a gesture, a smirk. But it was something else. It was his way of making terror and pride a single emotion. Dion Hartley wasn't kidding. 
So it began, the inquiry as to why a man had to die violently, a man who dared me to stop his dying. Dion Hartley, Broadway knew him as a brittle sophisticate who wrote brittle bits for a six-bit magazine called Satire. I went there to the magazine's offices. They opened doors for me and supplied long cigarettes and short coffees until the editor could see me. Then the editor could see me. Sit down, please. Thanks. I'm Danny Clover. Shake, Danny Clover. I'm Sybil Raynard. I was just wondering that suit you're wearing. I like the way that fits across the shoulders. Who's your tailor? I bought it off the rack. Well, that's a twist I never thought of. Now tell me why we're chatting. Because of Dion Hartley. You're his friend, I suppose. Then we shouldn't be chatting at all. We should be screaming at each other. You hate him, huh? How pulpy. I love him. It's this extraordinary what Dion can do to a person. Now tell me why I'm answering you. I've got an interest in Hartley. He's afraid he might die. That would make you a doctor who I wouldn't talk to. An insurance agent who I'd have thrown out of here. A policeman who I wouldn't talk to or... A friend of Dion's. A good friend. Oh. <laughs> you too? Well, you never know. Welcome, Danny Clover. People want to kill him. What people? Me. I'd want to kill him. I said I loved him. On odd days of the week, starting with Tuesday, I hate him. You can follow me around and see if I'd kill him. I could do that. However, there's Camden. Yes, there is. The one in New Jersey, you mean. How pulpy can you get? I mean Camden Drake. Camden the writer. The Greenwich Village Camden. Camden Drake will kill Dion someday. You want to make a wager? I could make you a fine, interesting wager, Danny Clover. It was weird. It made no sense. A policeman tracking down a crime that hadn't been committed. A crime wanted and willed by a man who knew its shape was his own death by murder. And who had called in a policeman to prevent it, if the policeman could. Any setup as insane as that takes special handling. So I handled it in a special way. Sybil Raynard had given me the cue. She wouldn't talk to a policeman, she said. So I stopped being a policeman. I became just the good friend of the good Dion Hartley. And then Dion's other good friends talked to me. Camden Drake was no exception. Dion sent you to me? Yes, Camden. Dion said you and I'd have a lot to talk about. Dion is never wrong. Uh, you're a writer, he said. I write. That must be very interesting to write. Most of the time, it stinks. Huh. Dion said you have great talent. He said you were... Promising. Promising. That's funny. He never told me that. Oh? Is that the lot we have to talk about, Mr. Clover? No, I've heard other things about you. You have? Like what? Like if Dion should be killed, murdered would uh, be more exact. It would be you who murdered him. Ah, that makes for interesting talk. You don't want to know who told me that? Not especially. But that kind of talk could get back to Dion. It could even break up your friendship. Doesn't that bother you? No. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Clover. Because the friendship between Dion and me can't be destroyed by the ugly mouth of Sybil Raynard. You knew all the time, Captain. What's this, Camden? A manuscript you were working on? Yes, and put it down. You won't mind if I glance through it. Dion said... Put it down, I said. Put it down! Take it easy, Camden. It's not polite to slap friends. Friends of Dion. If you read a word of that manuscript, I'll kill you. It's that good, It's huh? only for Dion to see. Only for Dion! Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, Camden. But maybe Dion will never get to read it, because he'll be dead. Because maybe you'll kill him before you finish it. Is that why he sent you here? Because he thought I'd kill him. Maybe. Oh, he's so wrong. So wrong. He's got it mixed up, that's all. He should know it's Joan. It can only be Joan. Joan? He didn't tell you about her? About Joan York? No. Then I'm telling you. Go talk to her, Dion's friend. Ask her why she wants to kill him. I'll do that, Camden. Where do I find Joan? In Gramercy Park. 1712 Gramercy Park. Well, it's been a nice talk, Mr. Clover. Promise me you'll never come back. Good 
Yes, who is it? There was something about her, something like the promise a man makes to himself in some dark part of his life. The promise had the name Joan York. Her dark hair clouded to her shoulders, and her eyes were soft. The planes of her face, her mouth. The promise had the name Joan York. Who is it, please? I'm Danny Clover, a friend of yours. Camden Drake said I might speak with you. Camden? Of course, Mr. Clover, come in. Sit down, please. How is Camden? Why are you staring, Mr. Clover? Huh? Oh, he's all right. Why are you staring? Was I? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to be rude. I was busy. You were busy. At what? Illustrating, Mr. Clover. I do that for the magazine for satire. You wanted to speak with me? Uh, yes. We were talking, Camden and I, uh, about a man, about Dion Hartley, about Dion's manner of living, his manner of dying. That's when your name was mentioned. Who are you, Mr. Clover? Another of the charmed circle? A worshipper at the shrine of Hartley? Another of Dion's errand boys? It's a way of stating it. Go back to the great Dion, Mr. Clover. Go back and tell him you had your fingertips on my brain and you beguiled me with your charm. Miss York... Tell him you did all that and you finally learned that I wished that Dion Hartley were dead. I wished him dead, Mr. Clover. Tell him that. Why do you hate him so much? That's a searching question. I hate him because of what he does to people. To Camden Drake? To him. To others. But to him. I don't want Camden to disintegrate. To be a friend to Dion Hartley is to sow the seed of your own destruction. But you know that already. I know. Then you know the disenchantment that Hartley causes. Hartley sneers at the world and passes it on to all who touch him. That's death to a talent like Camden's. And you'd wish Hartley dead for that? I've already told you that, Mr. Clover. Take it back to your Mr. Hartley. Sit by his feet and look up at him, adoring, and tell him I said so. You better go now, Mr. Clover. Can I talk to you now, Danny? Oh, Danny. You've been sitting here for two hours now. Your face looks like it's all thumbs, Danny. You want something to tell you? Oh, you got a problem? Well, I am ready to receive it, Danny, and give you my utmost opinion on it. Try this. A man says he's going to be murdered and makes a game out of it. And three people in their own way have a motive for killing him. An editor, a writer, and... And, uh... uh, uh what, Danny? You never saw such a girl, Tadaglia. Hey, it ain't spring yet, Danny. Danny Clover speaking. This is Dion Hartley, Mr. Clover. Your charity has lost. What's the matter with you? You've lost the game, Mr. Clover. Mr. Hartley. Don't you see? I've been murdered. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat. Written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. And starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway's a street that'll give you anything you want, any way you want it. All you have to do is set your mind to it and be looking in the right direction at the right time. If you look one way, Broadway's liable to wink at you and nod its head. But look another way, you're liable to get a newspaper shoved in your face. That's so you'll see the headline up close. Dion Hartley, shot to death. Then you keep on investing in later editions to find out what juicy set of circumstances made Dion Hartley a murder victim. It was my job to gouge out the facts. At headquarters, Sergeant Gino Tartaglia summed it up tersely. Well, we got a murder mystery on our hands, Danny. You think so, huh? Yeah. And you would have nothing to worry about if he was just Frisbee Novotny. Look, Tataglia, I've got troubles enough. Huh? Well, what troubles? I haven't done this for a long time, Tataglia. Passed myself off as something I'm not. Oh, well, that is the duty of a plainclothes detective, Danny. Yeah, but I don't like the circumstances. This one time, I feel like I'm lying by not telling people I'm an officer. 
It's a feeling I don't care for. But, Manny, like I said, this is your duty. I don't understand, Danny. What people in particular do you feel like you're lying to? To a murderess, maybe. A girl. A girl named Joan York. Huh? Sounds funny, huh? Danny, you shouldn't let certain things blind you to other certain things. Sure, sure. I'll wait till I'm a little older, huh? I guess it's like this. I've just got a strange idea. Joan York's got the best reason for killing Hartley. I hate the idea. I'll see you, Tartaglia. I'm going someplace where I can get the whole thing out of my mind. Joan. What is it? What do you want, Mr. Clover? I wanted to talk to someone whose wish came true. Mine came true, the honest debt. Is that what you mean? That's part of it. And the rest? Tell me the rest, Mr. Clover. May I come in, Joan? I want you to. That music, it's... Lovely. Haunting. For you. Is it like that for you, Mr. Clover? Like that. But more like... Where's it coming from? Man in the apartment across the air shaft. He's a student. He plays like that four hours a day. Four hours? To the minute. But we can't let it stop us, can we? We have to talk about Dion's murder, you and I. Why do you say that? Because that's why you came here to me. Because you were Dion's friend. And because you were Dion's friend, you want to know if I killed him. There could be another reason. Joan. Joan, listen to me. Why do you do that, Mr. Clover? Was I doing something? You're different today. The way you say my name, it's... It's gentle. Makes me want to run to you like a child. I I, I didn't mean... <laughs> no. Please don't be embarrassed. It's me. It's the way I talk. Words have no meaning unless they say what you mean. That makes it easier. You were right, Joan. I want to know if you killed Dion Hartley. I have to know. I have to. Listen to me, Joan. You wanted him dead. You had a motive. At least the police would call it motive. I hated Dion for destroying people, people I've loved. Is that motive for killing a man? Yes. A good one, don't you think, Mr. Clover? You tell me, Joan. I'll tell you. But not now. Not now. When? Later. Take me to dinner, Mr. Clover. The Casca. It's a little restaurant with music. Just down the street. Eight o'clock, is that all right for you? Nine o'clock? I'll be there, John. Thank you, Mr. Clover. Come. I'm sorry, I had some things to take well, care of. it doesn't of. matter, you're here. Hungry? Only to talk to someone. You. Are you hungry? No. Then we can just sit and talk. I've been thinking, Danny. What? What were you thinking? That we're very much alike, you and I. How, John? There's a kind of terrible loneliness in you. I know it. I... No, don't stop me. I know it's a loneliness. Because you couldn't understand so well all that's empty and lost and frightened in other people. I know nothing about you, Danny. How did you get so far along so fast? You're frightened, aren't you, Joan? No, not that. It's not the right word. Released. Free. Lonely. Are those the words? It depends. On what I may have done with my life? Or someone else's life? On that. Will you dance with me, Danny? I want to. Could you kill Danny? What? A man like Dion Hartley. Could you have killed him? I don't know. I think you could have. A man like that. Did you? Somewhere, somehow, he must have given you motive, too. No, I didn't kill him, John. I know you didn't. 
I just wanted you to consider it for a moment. The thought of killing Dion. It didn't revolt you, did it? Did it, Danny? Dance with me, Danny. Dance with me. Well, well, well. If it isn't Joan Girl, complete with nothing. Hello, Camden. Goodbye, Camden. Camden, please. Please. I like that when you say please to me, Joan. It's like the old golden days before Dion Hartley. Whatever it is, take it somewhere else, Camden. That cut it, didn't it, Joan? That shining thing we had, you and I. Dion loused it, didn't he? Didn't he, Joan? Yes. He made it rotten. He made it filthy. He made me want no part of you or of him. So you killed him, huh? You killed him! You killed the best thing that ever happened to me! You killed him! Take it easy, Camden. Take it easy. The people are... Take your hands off me! Take them off! Easy, kid. Easy. I told you! Maybe now you'll believe yeah. me. Yeah, that's twice now, Camden. I owe you something. Here, here. Here, you two. Break it up. Break it up. What do you two bums want, all right? Hey, What's hey, the get... matter, officer? You want something, officer? Keep away from me. But, but, but I... I said keep away. Okay, but it shall be as you wish. Are you coming quiet or do I use this stick on you? All right, that's better. Come on. Thanks, Patrolman. Mesha Koff, you did great. Look, look, I'm only a stupid ox, Danny, but I don't get it. You, I should arrest. Yeah, exactly that. I didn't want those people to know I was a cop. Oh. I want this to look legitimate. Call me a paddy wagon officer. I want to go to jail. <laughs> What is it, Tartaglia? Well, word has it you got tangled up last night, Danny. Barroom brawl with a guy named Camden Drake. So? Well, I was just talking to Dempchuck, the ambulance driver. He just brought in Camden Drake. Oh, no. Yeah, Danny. Shot. They found him in an alley off Bank Street in the village. I only kidded myself for a couple of hours longer. I told myself maybe Sybil Raynard, the editor of Satire. I told myself that and had her checked and found out she'd flown to Florida immediately after my interview with her and had been confined to her room with the flu since she got off the plane. Airtight. Then I stopped kidding myself. I set everything up with headquarters and walked to where I had to go. And all the way there, the streets were gutters. And where I walked, people looked away. Danny. Come in, Danny. So early, Danny. It's hardly noon. You mind, Joan? No, you know I don't. Sit down. All right. Joan... Wait a minute, Danny. I'll fix some coffee. No, don't. No? Joan. Joan, after I was arrested last night... I went right home. Is that what you were going to ask me? Yes. Camden Drake's dead, Joan. He was shot dead. I don't believe you. He's dead. But who... It doesn't matter much, does it, John? Does it? Look, Danny, I'll get some... Wait, the door. Yes? Hiya, baby. Hiya, Johnny. Johnny, baby. Say, oh, Johnny, baby. Come here. Danny. Take your hand off her. Hey, hey, who are you shot? Who is this guy? Outside. I said outside. Danny. Danny. Danny, he's got a gun. Yeah. You do? Don't worry about it, Joan. I'll get him out of here. But you... You just... He's dead, isn't he? Get away from him, Joan. You don't have to look at him. Look, listen to me. I'll get him out of here. This doesn't have to concern you at all. You understand that, don't you? Will you go, Danny? I've got some money. Europe, maybe. I don't know. Take me with you. What? Take me, Danny. I just killed a man, Joan. You don't deserve to share that. Danny? You just stay here. I'll get rid of him. Danny, I... I killed Dion Hartley. Don't stare at me, Danny. Yes, I killed him. I think you knew that, didn't you, Danny? Now you know. Now it makes everything all right. You can take me with you, Danny, both of us. Joan. Yes, and Camden Drake, too. I killed him, Danny. Now you can take me, Danny. Now we've got two awful secrets we can share. It's better. Why? Why did you do it, Joan? Oh, I had to. I thought I was in love. In love with Camden. Dion was squeezing Camden's soul. I killed him. And the boy. It was easy. You heard Camden. He didn't want me. Camden knew what I'd done and said he was going to the police. It didn't matter after that. After you... Didn't you know, Joan? No. Know what? I'm a policeman, Joan. Danny. Get up, Markovan. 
You can get up now. Uh, yeah. Okay, Danny. Danny! Danny, no! No! Danny, you! No! Danny. Uh, nice morning, huh, Danny? I'd glad to run out and get you some coffee, uh, if you'd like some coffee. Oh, Danny. Danny? These things. I'm sorry, Danny. stretches out in front of you, this mirage called Broadway, this street that offers you dreams and laughs in your face, its crowd and cruelty, its sound and sorrow, its fury and a teardrop, its Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world Broadway my beat Broadway's my beat stars Larry Thor as detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia the program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis the musical score was composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. The cast tonight included Ann Stone, Virginia Gregg, Elliot Reed, Ted Osborne, Bert Holland, and Jack Crucian. Joe Walters speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.